let's start our afternoon session and the speaker is Professor Michael Davis from the University of Ohio and he'll talk about Coxter groups, right, uh, Coxter groups, arting groups and buildings of type FC. Please, Michael. Okay, well, I'm not so sure what a good idea it is to give this talk, but I'm gonna, it seemed like a good idea a week or so ago. But in any case, what it's about is that, um, I mean, the conference is on these polyhedral products and about, uh, well, I guess it looks like more than 11 years ago, I wrote this paper called Examples of Buildings Constructed Via Covering Spaces. It's in uh, Groups, Geometries, and Dynamics, Volume 3. Um, and I don't remember, in fact, last night after I'd written most of this, I looked and I, I had given talks on it before. I thought I'd, uh, and I have a pretty good set of slides, but it's not taking the, I'm going to do it with this instead. Could almost have recycled these 10 year old slides, which would have looked better. Um, so the idea is, let me see if I can use Peter's thing here. Uh, the idea here is, is we know how to use polyhedral products to construct cat zero cube complexes for right angled coxeter groups, for uh, right angled art and groups, and for right angled buildings. I'm not going to be making the you know, the Salvetti complex or the K pi ones, these are all going to be sort of analogs of uh, cubical complexes. And now in this paper I just mentioned, <clears throat> there's a, 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 con a construction, a similar construction, uh, which in fact is very completely similar. It, it, it's uh, almost exactly the same construction that instead of working for, um, graph products of groups and right angle buildings, it works for uh, more general buildings and um, which aren't right angled, okay? And the main use I'd had of this before was, uh, was uh, to con constructing uh, uh, new examples of buildings. I thought they were, maybe newer than they are. Uh, the last couple of days I was looking at papers of people who have written on this long before my thing, maybe going back to 20 years, often French, like papers by Remy and uh, this paper by Haglin and Paulin, and they say, so I'm gonna talk about the standard examples of buildings which include things like Katz Moody buildings. And um, they say that uh, you can use uh, complexes of groups and a, a theorem of uh, tits to, cons to, uh, to, to construct a, a, a variety of these other new examples with, with different properties, which are, include the examples. So I think that construction is, is very similar using complexes of groups to what I'm going to be doing now. It just, it's, this is just a slightly different slant. Maybe that other way is more general. And if I'd realized that I might not have done this example. So the, uh, so the, the examples, so I'm just, this was the last sentence. I said, you know, some of these examples could be constructed using, uh, complex of groups and this theorem of tits in a paper called a local approach to buildings where basically he says, if you have something like a complex of groups made out of uh, automorphism groups of uh, finite spherical buildings, then provide it, the, uh, so, which you know means that the link of each face will be a building, uh, then the, universal cover what you have is ends up being a building. So uh, th this, this is the replacement method. Uh, so this is what you could replace everything I'm saying by. This replaces this paper. Uh, 
Uh, but actually, maybe this paper is going to be easier. So I wanted to start by just <clears throat> uh, reviewing the, the construction of uh, the cat zero cube complex for a right angle coxeter group and the Deline complex for a right angled Artin group and the construction of right angled buildings. So this is, we've done this many times before. This is, uh, we start with a flag complex. Actually to define the group, we just need its one skeleton. My wife's phone is ringing down there. And we have a, a, an S is, a set, is its vertex set. And, um, and then we define the uh, polyhedral product of uh, the interval. Close this door. Wanda. We take a, a product, polyhedral product of intervals uh, relative to their, the endpoints, plus and minus one, with respect to this uh, group L. So this is contained in the cube of dimension, the number of elements in S. So if you remember the definition, I'm, This means you look at the, the set of points in the product, or the weak product, is it? well, in the product where you only have, <clears throat> if you look at the places where the coordinates, uh, if you look at the set of, 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 um, of indices where the, if you look at the set of indices where the coordinates are not one of the endpoints, that set of implicit, the, the, those uh, indices are the uh, vertex set of a simplex. That's the definition of polyhedral product. <clears throat> and now uh, the group, I'm writing uh, C2 instead of Z2 or Z2 for um, the cyclic group of order two. So the direct sum of S copies of C2, it acts on the cube as a group generated by reflections. Each factor acts by reflection in the corresponding factor of the cube. And the polyhedral product is stable under this action. It's a, it's, you know, maybe I should remind, this picture, it's in Brightson and Hefliger, or that I always draw, say, if, you know, if the cube is um, something like a three-dimensional cube, and say so you, uh, you, then you delete certain faces, which aren't simplices in your complex. So you might have, um, you might have the top and bottom faces there, but not the side faces. So the effect of that is, is you started with the cube, which was simply connected and you produced something that wasn't simply connected. So now you take, uh, actually, Kevin Shriva used this, called this Y sub L instead of X sub L. So this X sub L is a complex whose fundamental group is going to turn out to be the commutator subgroup of a right angle coxeter group. Um, okay, and then through in the rest of the talk, we're also going to need this idea of the fundamental chamber. Um, which I'm calling K. I know Tony Berry doesn't like K. Uh, I use L. And um, so it's a fundamental, K is defined to be either the polyhedral product of the interval from zero to one relative to one, or you can just think of it's this, it's this uh, X sub L intersect the fundamental domain, fundamental chamber on the cube with endpoints minus one and one. So as I said, why did I say that right now? Well, okay, I'm gonna say that again later. So let's let X sub L tilde be the universal cover of this 
of the polyhedral product. So these are the two steps you do. Take something like the polyhedral product and then you always take the universal cover. So X sub L is the universal cover of this. It's some cube complex. In fact, it's since L is a flag complex, it's going to be a, uh, a cat zero cube complex. And if you want to get back the right angle co coxeter group, W sub L, you let W sub L be the group of all lifts of the of the C2 to the S, the cyclic group to the S action on, um, on this thing downstairs, X sub L. You look at the group of all lifts of those to the universal cover, and then uh, however you want to say it, it's not very hard to see that, you know, the faces you've admitted, well, and, and, and it's, you can either see directly by its generators and relations or some general property um, that this W sub L is the right angled art and right angled, right angled coxeter group associated to L or to the one skeleton of L, the graph of L. And in fact, this universal cover is the davis muson complex, which I always call sigma WS, or maybe WLS. So this is the cat zero cube complex, and the alternate dis alternative description of it uh, is in terms of what was called the basic construction. So I'm now, I'm starting to write something else up for different book. I used to always call this U, but this, is, I used to call this U of WK, and it's, it's, an, it's also in Brightson and Heffler, or they use D, and it's called uh, the basic construction. So I won't even write that. So basically what this means is you take one copy of this fundamental chamber K for each element of W, and then you paste them together along the faces or the strata of K, which correspond to say the elements of S. So you have these strata, you have these faces, which are like called KS. And you, you paste, uh, if you have two group elements across a, a fundamental chamber and they, they differ on, um, they, they, they differ by an element of S, then you, you paste those two chambers together. You, you paste along these, uh, whatever they're called, panels or faces or something. Okay, so that was the construction of, that's the construction of the uh, cat zero cube complex for a right angle coxeter group. Now, what do you, you just have a slight modification of that gives you the, the construction for uh, a right angle building. So I wanna tell you basically what a right angle building is. First of all, the one dimensional or a rank one building on a, on a rank one coxeter group, or one generator coxeter group, it's just a set, E sub S, okay? And uh, this is a building of type cyclic group of order two, uh, one generator S in, in the S factor. And what it's, it's realization as a spherical building, it's just this set and as a, as a, Cat zero building is just the cone on E sub S. And then you can always take the product of two or more buildings. So you can take the product of these cones and we get a building of type, a coxeter group, maybe uh, the product of S copies of the cyclic group of order two, that's a coxeter group. And the generating set is S. And as before, we have L as a fly complex with this vertex set S. And now the point 
you don't see it yet, the analogy here is supposed to be that uh, that the interval from minus one to one is really the cone. The interval from minus one to one is uh, the cone on a set with two elements. It's a cone on plus or minus one. So instead of using for instead of using the cube, which is made out of a product of intervals, I take this product of cones. So that's what replaces the cube. <clears throat> and um, and to go but to use what's building language, um, the set of chambers in this product of cones, which basically just means the set of elements in the product of these discrete sets, you could think of them as, well, finite sets, for example, I'll call C prime. C stands for building. And, um, okay, I forgot to, for, I left out a page, I skipped something. So I take this product of these cones, L is the fly complex, and I let Z sub L be the polyhedral product, just as before. This is analogous to what I called X sub L. And I let Z sub L tilde be its universal cover. And basically, this is a general right angled building. Every, every right angled building with it, which is has a say a chamber transit of automorphism group is gotten by this construction. And if you want to look when you, you know, don't draw some, well, when you, if you think of a building as being made out of these fundamental chambers with, you know, if you think of a building as being made out of fundamental chambers, like an edge in a tree with more than one coming out. So like, uh, E sub S coming out, um, uh, adjacent chambers. So uh, the number of uh, adjacent, the number of, of chambers meeting on, on this panel is just the, the panel of type S is gonna be uh, basically E sub, e sub S, the number of elements in, in E sub S. So that, that's what a right angle building is. It's a polyhedral product. And I mean, it's, you take this polyhedral product, which is this thing which has a, okay, which is this product of the, in this finite thing, and then you take its universal cover, and that's what the right, that's what the right angle building is. I should mention, sometimes I, you do this where you, you could let each E sub S be a group. In which case, um, in which case, the fundamental group of this Z sub L is going to end up being um, the subgroup of the graph product, namely uh, the kernel of the map from the graph product of the G sub S's uh, to the product. But some, I, I, I don't, you don't really need to bring these separate groups into it in this case, uh, because somehow only the cardinality of the group is what matters and what the building looks like. <coughs> <coughs> I use basically the same fundamental chamber as before. <coughs> if I want to think of it, Well, I don't know. I, I, I want to think of the uh, center of one of these chambers as corresponding to one of these indices S. So I wrote an S instead of a one here. And uh, the set of chambers in this uh, product of these cones is just the product of these sets E sub S. So remember in the Coxeter group case, each E sub S is basically plus or minus one. 
And so this, uh, and so that's what this C prime is. It's the product of, of C twos, and uh, then this C is the lift of all the of the those, the lift of these chambers, or if you want the sort of the central point of one of, of these chambers. What am I doing here? So uh, the chambers in the universal cover are are, um, are the lifts of uh, of the chambers in this in the product in the Z sub L. And then, uh, so in other words, you could define these two spaces. Um, this space is what I'm eventually going to call the standard geometric realization of the building. But instead of using Coxeter groups, I just use these sets of chambers. I take, so this is just some discrete set, C prime and C. I take this, um, I take this set and I take one copy of the same fundamental domain as before, K for each element in this set, and I glue them together uh, whenever along, uh, this common panel of type K sub S. I glue them together exactly the way I did before. And um, if I do that uh, with the, in the universal cover, I get, uh, I get this building. There's more to be said here to, to prove things, but I, like for example, you can look at, here you can look at, in the Coxeter group case, you could look at copies of Z, C2 to the S, and when you uh, lifted those up into the universal cover, you would get copies of the Coxeter group, which would be the, called the apartments in the building. Anyway, that's, uh, the, the point was, I just wanted to say it's a, exactly the same construction as we did with polyhedral products. Or, um, as we did with uh, the Coxeter group, and we're doing it with polyhedral products again. Now, Jing Yin also talked about the building for a right angled Artin group, which is also known as the Deline complex for a right angled Artin group. So, uh, and again, this is going to be a a CAD zero cube complex. In this case, I could, uh, I could let each of these uh, E sub S's just be the infinite cyclic group right here, say generated by S. And then this, what I called the C prime would just mean the direct sum of S copies of Z, which is the Arden group, I call that A prime, it means the free abelian group. And then this C, and then I could look at, I could do this construction with a universal cover, and I could look at all lifts of this Z to the S action, and that would be a, a general right angled Arden group. So the building for a right angled Arden group is also a case of this construction. That's what I wrote here. And you can also do this by using, um, whatever we called this, the basic construction, which just meant you took A sub L, this meant you took A sub L uh, cross K and divided by the usual equivalence relation. So when Ruth Charney and I wrote our first paper on art and groups, this was, this was what we uh, concentrated on and it's an analogy to the Coxeter group case. Who was, yeah, Alexander Martin was saying, we called that the modified domain complex. Just in the old days, Coxeter complex and Deline complex, they used to always mean you always took K to be a simplex. But, but here we're taking it to be this subcomplex of a simplex. Okay, so now I wanna, I still haven't gotten to my main construction. Um, which is going to be the same construction, but with general Coxeter groups. 
Uh, before I did that, you know, uh, this is worse than hierarchical, uh, hyperbolic. The definition of building, even going back to, to tits or anybody, you know, it's just, uh, it's incomprehensible. It's, uh, and there's, there's a couple different versions of it. There's this big book by Ken Brown and Peter Abramenko where they do the modern version using the W distance function. But basically, I mean, I think the point Pitts was making in all of this wasn't to think of a building as a simplicial complex, but was just to do it combinatorially just as some sort of object in combinatorics. And the basic combinatorial point of view of it, of it, a building is you just have a set of chambers, C. There's also a Coxeter group associated to this system on generating set S. And then there's uh, a bunch of properties. But before I even get that, the basic way they think of this is for each uh, generator S in capital S, there's an equivalence relation on this set of chambers. And I'll think of uh, two different elements in the same equivalence class, I'll call them S adjacent. So basically, this, uh, there's an equivalence relation for each S and it's gonna tell us how we wanna, once we know what we want the geometric realization of one of these chambers to be, it's going to tell us how to glue together two chambers. So this is called, uh, these, for, these, this property is called, just having this property is called being a chamber system. And then a building is, in the classical definition, it's a chamber system with some additional property of having a bunch of apartments. And, uh, in the modern definition, it's some sort of, you have this set C of chambers and you have some, what they call a W value distance function on that. So you have some function from C cross C to the group, which basically records sort of the labels on a, on a, on a gallery, on a path of chambers going from one chamber to another. And then there's this idea of the thickness. I'm gonna call that uh, Q sub S. It really depends, it looks like it depends on the chamber, on the chamber C. Uh, but basically it just means the number of chambers which are uh, S adjacent to the chamber you started with. Um, and if you have a chamber transit of automorphism group that doesn't depend on C. So I'm gonna just pretend it never depends on C. Um, uh, and the building is thick if uh, you always have, if each of these equivalence classes has at least three elements. In other words, you always have two or more chambers adjacent to any other, uh, to any given chamber. And the basic example everybody tells you to think of, which everybody loves, is a tree. It's a set of edges, the chambers are the edges in a tree. More or less any tree can be a building. And, um, uh, the Coxeter group associated to this is uh, the infinite dihedral group, and its Coxeter complex is the real line divided up into image, into that's not a very straight line. And we think of uh, the endpoints of one of these edges as being labeled as being labeled by the generators of the infinite dihedral group. And uh, so this would be a This would be a building where uh, the Q sub S is, looks like it's two and the Q sub uh, T is three. Maybe I'll just say for sake of killing time, 
So the basic idea of these definitions of a building is um, if you have if you have a path of chambers, if you have a path of chambers in, in this uh, building, say starting with chamber C and going out to a chamber D, then you cross these vertices, which are, are labeled by S and T. So you end up, if you take an edge path in this from C to D, you end up with a, a word in S and T. So you end up with a, S, say, is a word in S and T. And if that is a, if this path of chambers has minimal length, then you can look at, once you have that, you can look at the corresponding uh, product of generators in the Coxeter group. And the basic idea of a building is that if you have two paths between uh, two different endpoints and their minimal length, then this element in the Coxeter group that you get is, um, is independent of the exact path, of the path. So that's how you define this W distance function. But, so in other words, if you, have, if you take some path in the tree, you can think of that as giving you a path on the real one by just looking at the letters of the, of the vertices that you cross. Anybody wants to interrupt? I can. I'm happy to hear a question. Okay. So I'm still having. I just. So I just want to talk about what was. So I'm no expert on buildings. Far, far from an expert. I've just been trying to get an impression of what's going on for 30 years. Um. So, the, you know, the first work of Tits on this was on spherical buildings. Spherical building means that um, the Coxeter group is a finite group. I don't know why I wrote this. This should have been part of the hypothesis of the theorem, but sp spherical buildings just means we have a spherical Coxeter group. And um, the basic theorem that Tits proved was that if you had if the Coxeter group was irreducible, wasn't a product, and it had rank at least three, um, then uh, any uh, and it was thick, and maybe so. C is a thick spherical building, and maybe only a finite. It's locally finite or something. Well, I don't need that. It's, the Stitzes theorem is just a, a thick spherical building. Then uh, C, then C came uh, from an algebraic group over a field, and if if it was a, a finite building, locally finite, then it comes from a uh, from an algebraic group over a finite field. Just wrote this last night, so I didn't really. I wasn't too careful how I said it. So for example, this is, you know, there's a building associated to GLN over a finite field. This is the one building that they, uh, maybe I have a picture of that. Um, so to get this building, what you look at is you look at uh, chains of subspaces in F Q to the N. And that corresponds to a, a simplicial complex and that simplicial complex, the, the top dimensional simplices in that uh, are the chambers in the building. This is the one example everybody understands. Maybe I'll say before I do that. So this is supposed to be a picture of that. I got this out of maybe Ken Brown's book. So this is a case where the the Q, where the FQ is a, a field of two elements, and this is sometimes called the you know the projective plane over the field with two elements. So you have two types of subspaces. This is all inside uh, 
FQ cubed. Inside a three-dimensional space, you have points, which correspond to one-dimensional subspaces, and lines, which correspond to two-dimensional subspaces. And then you can look at, and you put in an edge when two of those are incident, when one is contained in another. And if you just look at the graph of that incidence relation, you get this. And the building, this is the spherical building. The actual building, in my sense, would be the cone on this. This is a, a, a spherical, one dimension, a spherical building. And it's also, so these spherical buildings that are graphs, or these rank two spherical buildings, um, are also, I'm just, this is, so this is one source of examples of buildings. Another source is, are these uh, generalized m gons, which mean, um, a rank two spherical building. And those, so those are associated, the coxeter group is a dihedral group generated by two generators. And it turns out, there's some graph theoretic way to characterize that, but it turns out that the M's which can occur, this is the theorem of Feit and Hig Higman, the only ones that can give you finite uh, generalized M gons or M is two, three, four, six, and, and eight also appears, although it's not clear why it should. And then I'm not gonna say much about this. There's affine buildings. These correspond to the case where W is a Euclidean coxeter group acting on Euclidean space. And if this group is irreducible, then this K turns out to be a simplex, single simplex. And the buildings that you get come from taking uh, fields with valuations or maybe valuation rings. So for example, you get a building for SLN of, uh, of uh, Laurent polynomials or you know, infinite Laurent, Laurent polynomials in one variable over the field with, uh, with, of uh, order Q. So that, these were sort of the very classical examples. And then in the 80s, they developed this theory, also to a large extent due to tits of Katz-Moody groups and buildings. And roughly what happens is, is any, almost any, well, I'll say what it is. You, you could think uh, most any Coxeter group can occur. And you have uh, some finite field again in here. So what you need to construct one of these is what's called a generalized Carton matrix with integer entries. And having integer entries, it doesn't have to be a symmetric matrix, but this comes down to saying that if you look at four times the square of the cosine of pi over m, that has to be an integer. And the only possibilities that work for that are m equals two, three, four, six, there's no eight, but there's an infinity. So any Coxeter group that does, you know, this excludes Coxeter groups like, you know, whose diagram looks like has a five in it or a seven, you know, various tri hyperbolic triangle groups. They, all, the all the labels on the edges have to be two, three, four, six. Okay, so now the last, but 10 minutes, I can say what the construction is. Fortunately, it's going to be pretty much the same. Well, at least if I... So now I'm going to start with a finite Coxeter group, a spherical Coxeter system, W prime. So it's, it's nerve, all the possible finite subgroups are, 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 uh, form a simplex. And I'm going to take uh, some phi complex which is, uh, which I can think of as a subcomplex of the full su subcomplex on delta, as a, as a simplex, a subcomplex of the simplex on S. Actually, The fact of it being a fly complex, the way I'm going to think of this, I get this subcomplex L by just omitting some edges of the simplex. And then 
whatever edges I have left, I take the fly completion of that, and that's going to be what L is. And I'm going to say this in an overly complex. And then I have this, the inclusion of L into delta. And I define a new Coxeter matrix, or new MSTs. These are the orders of the product of S and T. But I look at the order of the product inside delta, and that's what MST is. If ST is, a, is an edge of L, and if it's not an edge, I make it infinity. So basically, I get these MSTs just by changing certain MSTs in the, in the Coxeter, uh, finite Coxeter group to infinity. I change certain things to infinity. And uh, then I get a resulting Coxeter system, WS. And just for what I'm going to say later, I'm going to let K prime mean basically the simplex or the cone on the simplex. This is the chamber for the finite Coxeter group. And K is going to stand as the chamber for the uh, cone on this fly complex L. And then I'm just noting, I mean, I have this, I don't know if I should read this or not. Then I'm just noting that the map S goes to, uh, its image in the finite group gives me a homomorphism from this new Coxeter group defined by these MSTs to the finite Coxeter group. Now, actually, in the paper I showed you, I had a slightly more general assumption, which maybe is good for producing examples. But you don't need to start with a finite Coxeter group, you just need to start with some Coxeter group, and then you have to have. Uh, any simplicial map from a new complex L to L prime, you define these new MST, uh, simplicial map is supposed to be an injection on each simplex. You define these new MSTs, and the condition you need is not that, once you define these new MSTs, that puts a metric on each uh, edge of L, and the condition you need is that that this L is a metric fly complex, which means this L is the nerve for the new Coxeter group. Anyway, I don't really ignore that green stuff if you didn't like that. So then we can do the basic construction. This is with uh, delta again. So this is like take the finite group cross delta more or less and divide or cone on delta, so it's k prime, and then divide by the equivalence relation. So that turns out to be a cone on a sphere or a disk. It's the Coxeter complex for the finite Coxeter group. And now I now and now I do so this is this is what's supposed to so this is analogous to the cube. I'm replacing the cube by this Coxeter complex for a finite Coxeter group. <clears throat> and now I do what I did in the polyhedral, to take the polyhedral product was I use the same group, the same C cyclic group, product of cyclic group of two groups, but I use the new fundamental, uh, if you like, I took the new fundamental domain, I used the new L, so I got this by throwing away certain faces of, of the simplex. But I, using the old group, I get, I just do the same construction with that, I get this W prime, I get D of W prime K. So this is basically, uh, well, it won't be, it won't be uh, simply connected because I've thrown away some faces of K. I've thrown away some uh, edges of K, if you like which correspond to certain two cells, and that keeps us from being simply connected. So this is like, this is like what I called uh, X sub L before. Good. And then I let uh, D tilde be the universal cover of this, and W the group of all lifts of this, and just as before, exactly the same argument. D tilde is this Davis Mousson com complex. Uh, 
So in fact, it's equal to P of W tilde K. So this is cat zero cube complex. Okay, five minutes, I guess. So I can do the same thing for art and groups. It doesn't quite work as well. I can start with uh, a spherical art and group. Uh, I can look at its Deline complex. Um, which turns out to be contractible. That's by Deline. Um, and um, then I can look at uh, A to be uh, the group of lifts. And that's going to be uh, an art group of type FC. FC because in this, in, the general, in this case, where I do a finite group, the L is going to be a flag complex, finite uh, spherical art and, art and group. And just as before, um, so it's it's not uh, simply connected, but in the when it's type FC, you can put a metric of non-positive curvature on it. But this is a, a problem if, if, it's, if it's not a finite coxeter group. And then uh, this, uh, the universal cover is this Deline complex uh, for, uh, for, for the Artin group. So th this, uh, this has the question, uh, is this, is this uh, contractible? That's the main question. Is this contractible if you start, if you do, if you don't start with a, it is contractible if you start with a, a fine a art and group of spherical type, but otherwise it's not known. Okay, now I get to the main thing, buildings. So I, I start with a spherical building, C prime. Um, its uh, geometric realization is this basic construction with chamber of the cone on the simplex. As before, it's not simply connected. Now I want to, okay, so now I want to define uh, what's analogous to the Coxeter group. What happened to here? This always happens to me. I think I just have to. Well, this, so this C is going to be analogous to the big Coxeter group, but I don't want to mention uh, any groups in it. So it's a set of chambers, new chambers. This is the inverse image of the old chambers in, in this uh, spherical building. Under the canonical projection, I didn't write that down. But now this C, so now the theorem is, the theorem in my old paper, and it's just, you know, more or less just verifying the axioms for, for a building for C followed from the axioms for C prime is that if you take this C, it's a building of type, it's a combinatorial building of type WS and it's geometric realization. is just the universal cover of this finite building. So this is my, that, that, that's the point of the talk. This is my method for constructing buildings using something like the polyhedral product construction. So what I'm saying is, what the, I'm thinking of the, you know, in, in, in the polyhedral product construction, we started with a cube was the basic object. We took a subcomplex of the cube, and then we took some universal cover of that to get the, the interesting thing for the graph product. Here we start with, A finite building or a spherical building that's analogous to the cube uh, and we do the same process of we change the coxeter group by throwing away some edges we get a new coxeter group and uh, a, a new sub complex of this building we take its universal cover and that's the new building so maybe in the last couple minutes 
I mean, I won't do this other example. Okay, just to say two things. One thing is how you can use this to get some new examples of buildings. So, so the one question, maybe I should have written this down here, is uh, what, how do you get an example of built when you have a building? Uh, can the finite fields, can the FQs, be different? Say, so if all the labels were two and three, you'd expect it always. In Katz, Katz Moody case, you always get the same finite field. And the point is, if you start with a rank three building, spherical building, there's some, you only get one finite field if it was irreducible. But if it's reducible, then each of these could correspond, each of these things, each of these dihedral groups could correspond to a different rank two spherical building. So in other words, if W prime is is the product of dihedral groups, then its nerve looks like this simplex with some uh, disjoint edges labeled by say M1 and M2 and the other edges labeled by two. And now, now I claim once I do that, I can, I can get a, a subcomplex that looks like this. It's a polygon where the Alternate edges are labeled by the MIs, and then uh, and and every other edge is labeled by a two. So in other words, if I take this picture right here, and I take a path, say that starts with the M1 edge, I take a subcomplex which has the M1 edge, and then an edge labeled two, and then the M2 edge, and then go back, uh, then go back by another edge labeled two. I get a quadrilateral that looks roughly like this. And if I take a bigger product, I can get um, any polygon. And now I can assign different finite fields to each of these M icons. So this is what people call, I think they had this, they probably had this specific example, but this is called, um, uh, it's not a Katz Moody group. Because you have different finite fields, and it's what you would call a, a building of mixed type. I also said you could get things that look like that. Finally, in the I'm over, but I just have one last slide. Basically, another piece of bad news. Why are these interesting in geometric group theory? Well, why are they? One problem with Katz-Moody groups, if we is if we have a, a group which is not the Paxter group is not spherical and not affine, then we get this big, totally uh, big locally compact, totally disconnected group. That's the Katz-Moody group. But in general, it doesn't have any lattices. It has no discrete action, so you don't get any. Uh, from Katz Moody theory, you don't get any proper actions of discrete groups. Now, in this theory, we probably, I think we end up with the same building as in the Katz Moody case, but um, you don't see the Katz Moody groups. And in fact, so if you start with a, if you start with a finite building, so then its automorphism group will be finite. And now we could do the same thing as we as we did before with the with the Coxeter group. We could take any subgroup of the automorphism group. For example, it could be the trivial subgroup. And we could look at uh, all of its lifts. So again, this acts on this G acts on this uh, whatever it was called, D tilde of of uh well it acts on this on the building for for d of ck and g prime acts on the thing for, for c prime and you can let g be the group of all lifts and that will give you a discrete group uh acting on this new building which is transitive on chambers and it's a discrete group but if, if the original group was transitive on chambers this one will be and even if you just take only one chamber, the identity, you'll end up with a, 
a torsion free lattice. So I uh, probably the most interesting, this is the most interesting remark right at the end. So this is a good way. Uh, so this is a good way to produce uh, group actions, co-compact group actions on cat zero cube complexes. So I think I'll, I'll stop there. I went over. Okay, Any, every, anybody still there? Did I shut out a long time ago? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, and let's unmute and thank Ma Michael for his talk.